view of the Moselle family property where victims Maggie and Paul were found shot to death on June 7th of 2021. We expect to get closing arguments around 11 a.m. Eastern, and we will bring you live as soon as they begin. But right now, joining me with all the details is our boots on the ground reporter, Anjanette Levy. What do you have for us, Anjanette? Hey, good morning, Imran. You know, I'm in the line right now here at the Colleton County Courthouse. I want to give you an update on the jury view, though. Uh, the jurors, according to the poll reports, left here in a bus around 9:10 this morning. Judge Newman rode separately in a truck. Uh, by himself, uh, apparently with some type of sheriff's official, and they made their way to the Moselle property. We are told that they will be taken to the kennels uh, to look at that area and then taken to the outside of the home there on the Moselle property. And we're told uh, that they've been told to keep an eye out for snakes because apparently in this weather, the snakes can come out. So uh, they are on snake watch while they're out there. Obviously, we don't want anybody getting injured, possibly bitten by a snake or, or something like that. But I wanted to show you a little bit of this line here. Uh, this line for to get into closing arguments is very long. I spoke with the first woman in line and she told me that she got here at three in the morning and uh, she's been following the trial closely and she wanted to ensure she got in for closing arguments which start at 11 o'clock this morning. As we've been telling you, I actually just interviewed a woman who traveled here last night from Kansas. And so, um, yeah. A lot of people are very interested in this, and it feels like it's mostly women. And two of those women who are very interested in this case are with me now. Miranda, you came here from Charlotte, and then uh, Chrissy, are you here from Charlotte as well? Yes. Okay, so you're friends. Yeah, we came down together. And Miranda jokes that it's Miranda just like the rights. So she's in the right place, <laughs> right? You're at the court. Yeah. I was born for this. So Miranda, what, is this your first time here? Why are you here? It's my first time at the Murdoch trial, but I was at Depp and Heard as well. And I just want to come and see with my own eyes what's really going on. I love the reporting, but I got to be here too. I got to see it. Yeah. So that's interesting because I'm, I'm surprised we didn't run into one yeah, another. Uh, Chrissy, is this your first time here as well? It is. I'm from Charleston. I was born and raised and then moved to Charlotte. And I just felt like it was so close to not make the effort to get down here. And I really wanna see the jurors myself. It's really hard watching it day after day and not knowing their expressions and you know the vibe of the courtroom. And it's really hard to read some of their expressions. And since some of them broke out with COVID, some of them have been wearing masks, which was a change from when I was first here. So you really can't tell some of their uh, facial expressions, but they've been very attentive. Mm -hmm. What is it, Miranda, about this case in particular? Uh, obviously, you said you went to the Depp case. That's totally different. Uh, what is it about the Murdoch case that has captured your attention? I think that it was a, a wife and a mother and her child. And I'm a mom, and I can put myself in her shoes. And I want justice for them. And I wanted to come here and hopefully be a part of that. But what does justice look like to you? Do you do you believe that the state has proven its case beyond a reasonable doubt? I've been asking everybody. No, I don't think for every juror that it has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. I think that there will be someone in that pool that's going to have just enough to say, guys, I can't I can't convict him and potentially might be hung. But you don't believe the state's proven its case beyond a reasonable doubt? I do. I don't you think do. that. Okay. Sorry. I do. I don't think that the jurors are going to see it like that. All of them. Okay. Interesting. Chrissy, how do you feel about the burden here? Has the state uh, met that heavy burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt that Alec Murdoch killed Paul and Maggie? I definitely think they have. And I, I'm just stuck on if he didn't do it, then he wouldn't have lied about being at the kennels. That would have made his alibi. And I would have said, we were all alive. We had just been there together. And I can shorten that timeline of when it happened for you. And that's where it started for me. And lie after lie after lie, it just doesn't add up. And I think they've done great at pointing out all those points. Inconsistencies. Yes, absolutely. Did you believe anything he said on the stand? Not much. No. Not much. Absolutely not. No, I believe that when he finally said that he lied to all these people, and he was like, yeah, I lied to them. Yep, I lied to them. And I lied to them. That's when he told the truth. Interesting. <laughs> It's very hard to believe someone when they, when they admit, yes, I lied about all of this, but this one thing, that's when I'm, I'm telling really the telling the truth. But you lied about the most important piece of evidence that would have, you know. And lied about it for so long. For so long, to everyone, to everyone.
I to just your think, and I think he's a pathological liar. I think he's a narcissist, and I think that he has gotten away with things for so long, and he's believed these lies for so long that he doesn't even know what's truth and what's false anymore. Very interesting. Well, ladies, thank you so much. I appreciate your time, um, and I hope you get a, a decent seat in there. You can hear everything and see everything that's going on. Thank so, you. Thank, you. thank you. So, Imran, there you have it. Uh, two of our, you know, viewers here, people in line waiting to get in. Uh, I spoke uh, to other people. It was interesting. They believe the state's proven its case, but I spoke to two other women in line who told me earlier that they believe Alec Murdoch is guilty, but they don't believe it's been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. So uh, we have people with differing opinions here. So they believe he did it, didn't believe the state proved it, but obviously Miranda and Chrissy here believe that the state did prove it and that he's guilty. Yeah, Angela, I got to ask you, uh, you know, we have uh, the armchair jurors, so to say. You know, we had that in Johnny Depp, and you just spoke to uh, Miranda over there, who was also uh, following the Johnny Depp trial. Now, um, it's a great sort of litmus test for attorneys to see how the public uh, are receiving the evidence. And now, you know, you're talking to people, you're seeing the uh, people outside the courthouse who have been following this trial word by word. Do you get the sense that there's more people leaning towards an acquittal or a conviction based on your interaction with them? I don't think that anyone is leaning toward an acquittal. I, I think that's highly unlikely. Uh, you know, I've, just from my, you know, small poll here I conducted this morning, you know, you've got two people saying uh, they proved the case, two other women believe he did it, but the state didn't prove it. So uh, I think that really the most likely thing that's going to happen here is it's going to, it will either be a guilty verdict or a hung jury. But we haven't heard closings yet. What are we going to hear in closings? Is there going to be something that we hear in closings when each side ties together what they want the jury to consider that's really going to solidify uh, maybe a, a guilty verdict, a not guilty verdict, or a hung jury? I, I think an acquittal is very unlikely. Yeah, and Jeanette, listen, two lives were lost. We can't forget that. And, you know, it seems like there's a lot of people out there who are excited for this trial. Now, do you get this? A uh, sense from that crowd that there is uh, an excitement brewing as we wait for those closing arguments to be delivered by both sides in this case. I don't know if excitement is the right word. Uh, I think that there, are, you know, I, I kind of jokingly said a little bit ago uh, that the moms are mad. There are a lot of women in this line, and this case has resonated with them because a, a woman, a mother, Maggie, and her son Paul were brutally murdered. And I say that, I, I hate these adjectives because every murder is horrible. Uh, but th these are two people who were just gunned down on their own property. So I, I don't know if there's excitement is really the word. I think it's more interest and people feel emotionally invested in this because of it. And what do we expect in terms of a, a time frame? Now, we're, we're ex we have the 11 a.m. hour uh, as a time where we expect that uh, closing arguments are going to be starting there uh, in court. But you're down there. Do you get the sense that there may be a delay in terms of closing arguments starting? How long do we expect the jury to be on that scene view? I don't think they're going to be there very long. You know, the, the estimate yesterday was maybe an hour. Uh, it appears to me that this judge wants to get get this going. Uh, this this trial was estimated to last between three and eight weeks. Uh, we are well past the, the three week mark. Uh, Dick Harpulian has been kind of mentioning that constantly that, you know, he expected this to be a three week trial and it's been longer than that. So I think the judge is ready to get this going. I'm sure the jury is. They were told they were here for three weeks. They're, they've now been here for about six or so. So uh, I think that I think that everybody is ready to get this wrapped up. Yeah, Anjana, thank you for your great reporting. And we're going to be checking in with you throughout the course of the day uh, for that boots on the ground perspective as you report outside the courtroom uh, or courthouse, I should say, in South Carolina. Anjana, thank you for that great reporting. We're going to take a quick break here in Long Crime when we come back more recapping the Alec Murdoch trial as we wait for closing arguments to start. Right now, they're expected to start at the 11 a.m. Eastern hour. We'll bring that live to you as soon as they begin. Stay tuned here at Long Crime.